I, lo I just love working with Steve Barrett. I mean, the morning at Chiku Park comes out, we, where were we at? Nos in Gloucester Place. And he's sitting on the doorstep. So at 12, you know, 8 in the morning, I knew he'd been up all night. He said, man, the record's been banned by the BBC. I said, why? He says, they say it's a drug song. I said, I'm not dealing with that. So we, we wrote a press release how Ichiku Park was really the strip of land between Ilford Station and the block of flats where he lived with his mum. And they put a swing up there and it was called Ichiku because of the stinging nettles. And you get high off, if you rub, get too many stinging nettles, if you, really? fall in, if you fall into a bed of stinging nettles and get shocked all over your body, you can go into shock and you could die from it. Okay. So, it was a genuine story, right, what we made up. <laughs> By lunchtime, we had it off the list. <laughs> the records just flew to number one. Yeah. And those were the great ones. And then, you know, one night that Andrew's... Uh, what a band. Huh? What a band. They couldn't play America. They didn't hate it. They hated America. Really? That was their downfall. It wasn't just the small fact. It was Steve Marriott. Okay. I don't want to speak ill of the dead with Ronnie Lane, but Ronnie and I didn't get on. And it was Steve. If he dreamed them up with Ronnie when they were stoned, that was another matter. I didn't, I never, I wasn't around. But Steve is the one that would come in and say, hey man, we're going to do this. And I'd been involved with Steve Marriott at, Deca, at Mecca in the Ilford Pally, because he lived in Ilford. Hello man, I'm doing a kid session on Saturday afternoon. I'm Steve Marriott, I'm an actor, I'm an Oliver. Can I play the records? I said, carry on, fucking anybody can do this. And uh, we, were, we made a record, a Buddy Holly type record called Give Him My Regards, which we put on Decca, and they didn't promote. And we see them, and they said, we signed a Dom, man. I said, well, I was... Six months later, they're coming around, they're smoking with Andrew, Andrew and he's going, okay, and we've got to leave him. So a couple of weeks later, I'm sitting there quietly in this unbelievable office that Andrew insisted we build it immediately. In comes Don Arden, got to see you, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to sell you the small faces. I said, Don, they just died. Look, I said, have you got a contract? He said, yeah, there's the contract for this and there's the contract for that. How much do you want? He said, I want 30 grand. I said, oh, no way. 20. So we ended up at 25 grand. But it had to be in cash and a brown paper bag. So, you know, the paper bags were getting bigger. You know, I read the contracts and I said to Andrew, I've got to tell you, Don's got a contract with Decker. Don's got a contract with the small faces. Do you get it? He said, no. I said, the small faces don't have a contract with Decker. He says, so you mean we could put them on immediate? I said, yeah. We signed it. The boys came in the next day. They signed new agreements. We gave them 10% royalties, which was unheard of at the time. And Andrew said, look, boys, take this. And he gives them this block racked up. He said, we've arranged a mobile and you're going to go and record in the country. Hey, man, fa what is this stuff? Just take it. They couldn't wait to get out in the van or the car to go because it was a block of hash, a fucking great big block of hash. And that's how they wrote Ichiku Park and Ogden's and all that whole thing. And Steve Merritt came in to me and said, look, man, can we get it in a tobacco tin? I said, no, but we could probably get a tobacco cover. He said, okay. I rang up Imperial Tobacco and they sent over this book like this. And I'm flicking through and it goes, Ogden's Nut Brown Flake. Steve, come and have a look at this. He said, yeah, fabulous, can not go on, that'd be great. So he says, you couldn't ask him if we can put a packet of cigarette papers in it and call them SUS. <laughs> I ring the guy, I said, look, we'd love to change. He said, you can do whatever you want. I said, we want to put a packet of cigarette papers and call them SUS. He says, look, young man, he said, I don't know who you are. He said, but my job's to sell tobacco. Your job, sell records. If I can help you and it sells my, 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 my tobacco, love it. Couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> and that's how Not Gone Brown came about. He comes in, he says, now sit down, get a cup of tea. And he plays me Tin Soldier. That's one of my favourites. It is my all time favourite Small Faces record. He says, before I play it to you, you're not going to like the opening because it takes a little time to get to the song. I said, well, he said, I know what you like. He had me sussed completely. But he said, Tone, take a deep breath 
And listen, here it comes. Oh, I could only get it to number two. That was my biggest disappointment. If I, if they were disappointments, I couldn't get it to number one. It was such, to me, it was just a really great polish pop record. And then Sunday afternoon, he brings in on a Monday. He says, can, can we get into a limit tonight and re-record it? And Andrew says, no, you won't. He said, what do you mean? Then? Keep it just as it is. You can overdub it. Keep the dog barking like Brian Wilson, right? But that, the magic of that record is lazing on a Sunday afternoon. You were lazy. He said, I was stoned out my boogaloo, man. I said, so, but, we said, but it sounds like it. If you go in tonight to re-record it, you won't get that sound. You know, you'll have a perfect vocal, but you won't have the magic because there are things in life that become magical. And that was it. Every day is sun.